Bloop. Oh bloop, hi. Bloop. Bloop. Look at that. I wrote it backwards so it actually works. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Look that. At that. Innovation, innovation. We're back, we're, we're back. back. People. This is the Bali edition, as we are in Bali. We are. True uh, story. Indonesia. Indonesia. Uh, how are you guys doing? What's what's happening in the world? Like, what's going on? Oh, look at how they did this now. Yeah, uh, they slide is switching it up. They're switching the game. The game is being switched. Today's subject, guys, uh, is elevation requires separation. It sure know? does. Like, like an airplane, you know? Shh, and they have to go. Um, so, yeah, we really wanted to, to dive into this conversation because, uh, A, it's very broad and there's a lot, lot of places we can go with this. Yes. And all of them are true for us. Yeah. It don't have to be true for you. So anything we say over this next 45 to 30 to an hour. Well, I'm gonna, can I just chime in on this? Do Anything it. that anybody says at any given point. At any point. At any point, try it on. Blah. Like, try it on, for real. Rasta. We find that a lot of people are looking for the guru, they're looking for somebody to I tell them something. I am not your guru. I'm not your guru, Tony says. But I'm actually your guru. But he kind of is for a lot of people. Yeah. Because a lot of people are looking to the outside to find the answers. We believe that everyone has the answers they need here, and it's just a matter of maybe getting triggered by hearing something that resonates. Yes. So if it resonates, take a look at it. If it doesn't resonate, take a look at it. Blue. Just take a look at it. Where are you guys coming from? Let's get a couple of those. We see some of our Aussie friends in here. We do. Let's get some comments. Nathaniel, what up? And if you wouldn't mind, Danielle. just send a bunch of those hearts. Hit the like the heart. And the, the hearts light. make us happy. Yeah, they, they, they make us do happy dances. Yeah, We're like it's the dopa dopamine hit. <laughs> It's going down. Um, Shelly Bruce, yeah, Rich, I see what up, Barry? What's happening? Sam, I don't know. What is happening? Facebook Live, what are you doing? Why is this working? We... Can somebody comment and if you even hear us Hold at on. this point? I'm going to check on my page and see if it's working. Can you hear us? Are you commenting at all? It says we've only been live for one minute. Really? Are, are we, we on? Because there's a delay, probably. Maybe. Click on it. Oh, it's working. It's happening. Okay, people, comment on it. I'm watching no, no. it. Oh, look, there's hearts on here. Yeah. It's All right. not happening over there. It's not happening on our camera anymore. This so is So we weird. just need to see to make sure it's working. Okay, so change the game on us. Yes, yes. loud and clear. It's oh, working. Awesome. There's a bunch of comments that we're not seeing. Okay, something's happening. Awesome. Hi, Facebook. Well, it's fine. We'll just read the comments from here. Got it. I guess. Okay. Love you guys. Okay. If we look down, we're reading your comments. That's uh -huh. what's happening. <laughs> oh, show. Okay. So where are you guys coming from? Where you at? Where you at? We got, let's see, in the house, New Zealand, Montreal, Brisbane, Australia, Boop. Austria, Innsbruck in the house, Salt Lake nice. City, Arizona, Ontario, Texas. Arizona, we will be there. Jacqueline O'Leary, what up, mom? I can't wait to see you in January. Who's here from Instagram? Charlotte, we just did Instagram. Vancouver. Ohio. Videos to say that we were here. PA, what up, Shauna, Soul Schooler? Adam, Woo -woo. what's up, my man? Adam's on, yes. Nathan. Adam is back in the house from Tanzania. Okay. All right, guys, so we're jumping in. Elevation requires separation. Boom. A lot of people are looking to elevate their game, but they're not willing to change where they're at. Yep, or let go of anything that they're attached to. Yes, <laughs> and in order for us to. Uh, let's say evolve uh, in our consciousness or in, in business in relationship or anything of that nature sometimes most of the time as John C Maxwell says in his book um, 21 laws of leadership there we go something like that um, irrefutable laws yeah you have to give up to go up <laughs> yeah and then somebody remakes it and say you got to give up to grow up right Ooh, and okay, so remix. sacrificing sacrificing some of the small thinking let's just start with that right so all of us at some point during the day, let's not even say the year, during the day have that conversation of um, lack, yeah. limitation, that we're not good enough, that we need to know everything before we actually take the step. That, so you know, many people wait for that. Yeah, I'm not pretty Plan. enough, I'm not tall enough. Um, I'm not filling the blank enough. Yeah, so those conversations, in order to uh, elevate, to take your your life to another level, you're gonna have to let go of some of those. 
And the problem is, is so many people are addicted to those conversations. They're yes. addicted to the limitations. They're addicted to saying how they're not strong enough or smart enough or whatever the case may be. And let's go into that. Boom. Because here's why. Do it. A lot of people go, I I'm not addicted to my pain. I'm not addicted to my suffering. That's ridiculous. Why would I be addicted to that? Because it validates a story deep within your subconscious and unconscious about how you're not good enough, you're not lovable, you're not worthy of attention, you're not worthy of love, you're not worthy of success. And human beings are so tricky, the ego is so tricky, that the ego would rather be right and certain about something yeah. than live in the vast uncertainty. So the ego can be certain that you're unlovable. The ego can be certain that you're not good enough. And the ego will find, search and find, and rescue those examples mm -hmm. to go see. Told ya. Told ya. Because the uncertainty, the discomfort zone, the outside realm of what is familiar to us, that elevation, mm. really is the unknown. Mm. And the ego hates the unknown because it can't control it. Yeah. It doesn't know what's coming. So the reason why we're addicted to those stories about ourselves is because we're addicted to certainty. We're addicted mm -hmm. to what we know to be true based on the stories we've been telling ourselves for years and years. So there's that. Now, I also want to talk about Elevation requires separation from our old habits. Preston's really annoyed that he can't see the comments. Yeah, like there that's they are. Stupid. That's not Look the it. comments. I see there, them now. There they are. Yay. Amen. We only there see we them one by one now. Yep. And, and there's then, filters. Oh my god. Guys, Facebook Live. Wait, 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 wait. Do it. Oh Boom. hi. Just the far eye. Black and white right black now. Black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Live. You ain't ready for this. Oh. You ain't ready for the black Switching and white filter game. The game up. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. our, we broke our window. Okay. Don't tell anyone. So, I kind of like the black and white for a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, that's happening, and then that's happening. That's no filter. Oh, that's a nice one. Country? No. <laughs> Preston vetoed country. Okay. Real We're weird. going back. Okay, okay. There we back go. Back to normal. Okay. So, I look how great the black and white looks. All right. We're doing it. Sorry. We just saw ourselves in black and white, and we got really excited. <laughs> okay. So, back to this idea. Elevation requires separation of our attachments. Now, attachments can be to these limiting ideas or they can be to our habits, our habits. See, a lot of people feel that they lack discipline. A lot of people feel like, oh, well, I'm just lacking the discipline to really go to that next step in my business. I'm lacking the discipline to really be with one person. I'm lacking the discipline to really get my health and my weight in order. And it's not that you're lacking the discipline, it's that you're disciplined in bad habits. Mm. So it's what you do on the day-to-day -day basis, on the moment-to-moment -moment basis that literally it creates your reality so the choice you make on what you just ate right before you came to watch this or what you're eating right now yes it, it may not have an instant effect tomorrow go green but it's going to have an instant effect instantly in a week in a month in a year it all adds up and it is an instant effect you just can't see it at the level that you're vibrating at That's which it. is so interesting but if you really take note and this is a part of what our work is about is becoming uh, instead of mad scientists happy scientists becoming joyful scientists mad like this of what's happening within and without yeah and just noticing interesting ah the energy shifted over there what has happened over the last even 20 minutes that I would be having the experience of the energy shifting over there? Oh, oh, I ate that thing. Yeah. I listened to that thought about how, um, uh, you know. I'm not good enough. Girls with those type of hair or extensions are such and such. Mm -hmm. And I went down the rabbit hole and now I find myself in a different frequency. Ah, interesting. So it's not out there, it's over here. And that's really key to pick up because a lot of people are looking at their life and going, I'm not, I'm not sure why it's not working. I'm yeah. not sure why I keep getting these results. I'm not sure. It's always I'm, you. I'm doing all the things. I'm doing all the right stuff. But what really, the most important thing to do, and it's the thing to do first, last, and all the time, is to monitor your frequency. Yes. Monitor your vibration, your energetic charge, because we know science is proving and has proven <laughs> that everything is energy. We know you, that. You have to read this comment. Hold on. She said, can you, can you talk, talk without, without moving your hands? No, we can't. No. It's impossible. Uh -uh. I actually physically can't talk with my hands not moving. I tried it. <laughs> I've tried it. It doesn't work. It's like my mouth goes completely shut when my hands aren't moving. This yes. is the trigger for this. We thing. actually can. Um, I'm just totally being just sarcastic. Choose not to. <laughs> yeah. That's just how we roll. And I get it if that's if that's hard for you. Some people, some people don't like us moving in our videos. So they, they want, want us to talk just like this. 
And so... Which would be really entertaining for an hour, I think. Of course, yes. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. people would really love no. if we talk like this. Joanne, I, you, you're you like more than welcome to have a preference. Um, yeah, a lot of people actually don't like that we talk with our hands so much, but that's kind of how we roll. So, yeah, so we either say, like we, it or you don't. And is, yeah, yeah. Um, that's how we roll. And we love that we talk with our hands because we're expressive and passionate people. Yeah. And it's, it's what good. we do. How many of you guys out there like our hand movements? <laughs> it's okay. We're getting a lot of smileys and hearts down here. So, um... Wait, so I was talking about how energetically you've got to really be conscious of your energetic contribution mm, to the moment. So, mm. a lot of people will have a shitty day. They'll be in a low vibration about their self-worth, they'll be in a conversation... Which is of, interesting because it's just really a shitty moment that right. they drag throughout. All the way in. <laughs> but, this is, but this is why it becomes a shitty day, right? It becomes a shitty day because you made a choice, mm -hmm. consciously or unconsciously, most of the time unconsciously, yeah. to have an opinion, in a, a judgment, um, a remark negative about yourself or mm -hmm. about somebody else. Mm -hmm. And when you have that ineffective and negative remark, it has a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. So you spit that remark out or you think it in your brain and your frequency lowers. Yep. Then that thought usually causes another thought, doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. not just one thought. It usually causes another one, which this is what happens. Vibration goes a little bit lower. Then we're in the next moment. And now that our vibration's lower, it's obviously creating more lower vibration experiences. So we now go to work and we've already had two lower vibration thoughts probably two million uh -huh. before we get to work. We're at work and our boss says something to us or our coworker says something to us that just like, really? Ugh, lower vibration again. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why our life isn't working. It's because you're not in check of your vibration. And be clear on this. Your vibrational currency, how your frequency is, is ruminating in the world is 100% your responsibility. It's Absolutely. nobody else's. It's not your husband, your partner, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, your brother or sister, your coworker, your government. It is not their job mm -hmm. to raise your frequency. It is your job and your job alone. Done. Now that I'm done with that rant. Get him. Um, <laughs> so yeah, guys, elevation requires separation. So where, where, in your life right now, just sit in this. Just be with this. We can all be with it. I'm. We're any, we're anything we ask you to do, always. we're doing all the time. So, yeah. where in your life um, is there uh, room for you to let go of, to surrender to, to give an eviction notice to? Yeah, like peace out. Um, something that isn't serving your vibration. That isn't serving because here's the thing. The only thing that ever matters in any given moment is how you feel. Yeah. And so, if how you feel is dictated by the meaning you're giving things, and if it's dictated by the beliefs you have about any given moment, then maybe one would need to take a look at, okay, so I'm, I'm experiencing, let's call it uh, frustration, right? These people are moving their hands too much and I'm really frustrated, Frustrating. right? Stop it. So then the conversation becomes, okay, this clearly isn't serving me. Is there something there for me to receive, which is why I clicked on this thing in the first place, and if there is, what do I choose now, Yeah. right? Because at that moment, you have now separated from the thing that annoys one the most at that point. Um, <laughs> your hand movements are it's serving my me. vibration. Gosh. Awesome. Thank you, but Joanne. I'm just using that as an example. Well, I like that you brought this up because I, you know, we're human. So I get frustrated and he gets frustrated. Yeah. Whenever I get frustrated and I'm consciously aware of my frustration, because mm -hmm. I'm not always, I'm not perfect. When I'm consciously aware of my frustration, I go, what about this situation is triggering? Me? Yes. Like, what about it? Is it that that person's doing something that I potentially feel frightened to do, mm -hmm. that I don't feel confident enough to step into yet, mm. that, like I remember mm. before I really got into this, Get um, baby. and really stepped into my power and owned my voice and owned what I love to do, I used to judge people that were out in the world doing it. I was such a hater in that way. And I have a video on this called um, The Five Types of Haters. I was totally the, 
the person who hated on people who were out there and not in a big way it was like in such an insidious way like I thought they were awesome I love what they did but I would judge little things about them like oh look at how they shot that video I would yep. do it differently yep. or look how they did X Y and Z I totally would have done it this way and that in a way is a form of judgment and hatred and it was because they were doing something that I wasn't courageous enough yep. to do yet myself. Yep. So again, look at your frustration and especially look at your judgments because we all do it. We all judge all everybody the all the time. We're meaning making machines. That's what we do. We look at things and we judge it. That's mm -hmm. how we survive. Now there's different types of judgments. So the type of judgment that brings your vibration and your frequency down, look at that and go, why am I holding and harboring that judgment? What about that person is triggering something in me mm -hmm. that's either lying dormant or is too afraid to come out? It's always you. Yeah. And so, interestingly enough, and she didn't know I was gonna share this, so I'm not gonna share the details of it, but we had a little argument the other day. And this is the exact thing <laughs> that we both, I'm, I'm clear on it that she did it, and I'm clear on it that I did it, right? So we had a little tiff, right? And we kept trying to, both of us kept trying to like find ways to like sort of neutralize it again. But then, Neutralizing tiff. But, but, but one or the other, one of us would just keep getting triggered and then it would just keep going, right? How many Which you guys, is a gift, guys. Yeah. Like it's a gift. Yeah, so, so it just keeps going, right? So yeah. then this happens at a restaurant. We find ourselves back at the house and this shit is still like sort of playing out. We're doing the silent thing that couples do when you're upset with each other or you do with your mom or your friends or whoever. And the interesting thing is that I'm, I can almost guarantee 100% that Alexi did the same thing I did, which is what we're asking you to do when somebody's moving their hands too much or whatever the case is. We went and said, okay, what is it about this that has me so fired up? Um, why am I... Uh, or what am I, where am I not willing to go within my own self? How am I responsible for this? What do I choose now? Yeah. And how, if this is what I choose now, am I willing to act now? Mm. And so, Alexi had her own version of that. I did. And then I had my version of it, where I went up to her and I kissed her and I said, I love you, and I just walked out of the room, right? And then she came in the other room where I was at and she said something. We both were kind of silent for a while. And then she said something to the effect of like, this is why this, this is why I was sharing this, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't mean to have you have that experience, which, it, what's the word I'm looking for? Neutralized it immediately, mm. right? And so back to it, none of us are perfect. Kathy Benson, absolutely love that woman. If you are not following Kathy Benson, follow her. Um, I saw a couple other people I really love. Yeah, it. what's interesting is I'm trying to load the comments. I saw a couple great comments. We're only seeing one at a time with this new Facebook Live. Yeah, something Facebook Live is messing with us. Yeah, they messing with us. Wait, we, no. we, are, we look cool in black and white. Leave us in black. And okay, white. I'm we trying cool. to get more comments. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, oh wait, try no, that thing. That's the other thing. Oh, um, so here's I'm trying to load it on my computer, but because we're doing a live, it's taking all the bandwidth in our hotel right now. <laughs> So, oh, oh wait, no. There's one huge long comment someone wrote that she asked a question about. Repost the comment. If you, if you just. I read the first sentence, so I'm going to totally assume that I know the rest of it. And I could be totally wrong. But what I read was, she said something like, that's the thing. I vibrate really high. I'm constantly giving good energy. I'm constantly vibrating towards others. Why is it still not working? Exactly. My, and my dad pops. is on here. What up, Pops? Hey, Daddy. Um, I love you. So... Uh, I can't find this comment. Show, but. show Granny this video, Daddy. Show Granny this. Um, but basically, so what I want to talk about is that comment is so telling because so often, I believe it was a woman who wrote this. So often women say, but I'm giving, yeah. I'm giving so much. I'm giving, I'm putting it out there. Why is it not, why is my reality not matching what I'm putting out there? Because you're not giving it to yourself first. And this is really key because we think that if we're constantly giving and nurturing others, which is a beautiful thing, we think that 
everything in our life is going to work. Yep. But that's still outside external validation and energy vibration that we're expecting. Mm -hmm. We're expecting others to give us love back. We're expecting others to appreciate us. Mm -hmm. We're expecting others to do for us as we do for them. And you cannot, cannot, cannot get anything from anyone else except yourself. Mm -hmm. You can get bonuses, like little love bonuses, like, ooh, that was a good bonus. I received mm -hmm. that. But your, your tank should be already full. And then if, if your man gives you some stuff, put that love in the bonus box. Like, great, I'm gonna leave, like, received in the bonus box. Love mm -hmm. that, thank you. My tank's already full, I'm good with or without, but thank you for that, fill my cup. Mm. Um, so now we're getting to... And I see you, my cousins are on here too. The whole family's on. Yeah, Hi, fam, guys. Davis is in the house. Yeah, yeah. What up? Um, okay, I saw some other comments. What is great about this? Uh, this is where I'm sitting right now while experiencing pregnancy loss. There's always a question, Annalisa. Thank you for that, Annalisa, for sharing that. What's in this for me right now? That's a great question to sit in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, where's the other one? Keep talking, I'm gonna look, oh, here. What to do if the feeling of guilt that we acted in a low vibration in the past and we can't repair it if we hurt or annoyed someone? Here's the thing, the past, the past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. What exists is the current here and now. So if your past, if you're feeling guilt from your past, you're actually creating and recreating a story of what actually happened. So there's science that proves this, that every time we go back to a memory, we, we, change it. we rewrite it. Mm -hmm. we, ch we add little pieces, we take away pieces. And your guilt, your guilt, you're changing that more and more and you're adding, adding to, to it. it. And guess what? There's also lots of science that says every time you go back to that memory, you're experiencing it, experiencing it in the body cellularly yeah. as if it's happening right now. Which is why it feels real. Which is one of the reasons why people get so sick. Yeah. And so sad. Yes. So here's the other thing. And I, want, I really have to add this. How many of you guys have ever had um, someone break up with you? That broke your heart. Had somebody do something really mean that was just like really screwed up and you're like, well, what the hell is that? Um, and how many of you in hindsight can look at that and go, I'm so grateful yeah. that so-and-so betrayed me because the moment they took my idea, I stepped into a whole nother part of my truth. Yes. I had to go into a deeper part of my own consciousness to even access what it meant for me to truly stand in the power that I came here to release and give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, you did some fucked up shit. <laughs> we all do. We all do. The guilt goes away when you forgive yourself. But it's all a gift. Everything that is happening on this planet is a gift. Nothing here is not intended. Yeah. And yes, you would like yeah. to change it all and like be perfect, but nobody's doing that. And, and let's talk about that too, because this is frustrating for, for Preston and I. We were talking about this last night with two friends of ours, uh, Kate and Hanare, uh, amazing humans that we love so much. Um, a lot of people are in the work of personal development and spirituality to bypass the bad. Positive all the time. Like, I just want to get, I just give me the tools so I can get rid of the bad in my life. Give me the tools so I don't have to experience pain and so anymore. Always smiling. Give me the tools so that I can be constantly happy. Guys, life is both. Yeah. And and we keep thinking somehow because of how we've been programmed that, that bad is bad. Like yeah. Preston and I don't use good and bad, we use effective and ineffective. Yeah. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna say bad, right? Because some of us have been entrained to think that there are bad feelings and good feelings. Mm -hmm. There are bad situations and good situations. There are bad things that happen to good people mm -hmm. and bad people that good things happen to. And all that good and bad talk is a separation of what is not a duality. It's, it's all encompassing. Life is this. Mm -hmm. And we've been going, no, it's this and this and this and this. It's, it's this. So when we get that, we actually get that we're not running away from bad mm. and trying to bypass bad to get to good. We actually get that good and bad, all of it, is a part of life. And the bad is a gift too, just yes. like the good is. The bad gives us tools and a tangible uh, breakdown to create a breakthrough from. And that's what a lot of people don't get. Like they think that 
the problem needs to just be solved. The problem is actually the solution as well mm. because it's just like a sickness. Like if you're sick and you've got stuff coming up and you know the mucus is coming out, you need the mucus to come out in order to solve and be healthy again. Absolutely. So the breakdown is actually your breaking point for the breakthrough. You need the breakdown for the breakthrough to get to that next level. Um, real quick, Todd Ames on here is like, who are you people? And then like two comments later, he's like, hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Todd. And hey, Daddy. Um, somebody just left an awesome comment, and I'm happy. Why does loss leave such a lasting effect of pain? Yeah. Desiree, just put that up. I can't read the rest of it. I can just see the first thing. Um, loss leaves such a lasting effect of change because you're holding on to it. Um, period. So loss, loss is attachment. Uh, we cannot lose anything in which we do not have, and. In our philosophy, and again, if this doesn't work for you, don't try it on. Um, but if it does work for you, awesome. Our philosophy is that we don't have anything, even our bodies, right? Oh, you're putting color back on? Uh -huh. Okay, fine. Switching the game up. Okay. Um, we believe that you cannot actually have anything. We are here as spiritual beings, leasing this, our body, leasing this, our life, leasing this, our loves, mm. leasing everything it's all on lease all of it all of it and we cannot ever really have anything because when we say yes to life we say yes to death and that means that our bodies our attachments on this physical human realm all of it goes away so loss is um, it, it's a byproduct of feeling attached and feeling as if you own something yeah you owned it in the first place and I get like the human experience of it like of course we experience loss and there is pain when when things leave our life but we also get to recognize that everything that's occurring is occurring for us to be able to see ourselves in a new paradigm yep. in a new <clears throat> perspective ageless deathless changeless beings made in the spiritual image and likeness of God yeah. so that ageless deathless thing uh, I know that may be a interesting concept to really sit with and be with especially when it appears that we're in this this dimension but um, you know a lot of us most of us probably all of us uh, can't see air but we know it's there uh, can't see electricity but we experience the effects of it yeah and so uh, having this spiritual conversation which is what everything is in essence in our energy. opinion um, everything is energy and so yes we have we ex experience loss from the human uh, pers perspective when it comes to the senses mm -hmm. right but there are people including ourselves we're in this practice as well um, who are in the the conversation of elevating themselves in a way in which they can experience that which is in the fourth fifth sixth seventh ninth hundred and fiftieth dimension you know, uh, While at the same time, though, uh -huh. not forgetting and remembering that we've chosen the human experience. Oh yeah. Again, like so many. Then this goes back to what I was saying. So many people want to bypass the human experience and like get to samadhi, get to enlightenment, get to nirvana, and they'll sit meditating all day and they'll do all these things to get to this space of like neutrality. Which, yes, of course, great, please, but also honor the human journey that you've chosen. Yeah, it's super fun. Like it's, it's fun and it's messy and it's scary and it's awesome and it's elevating and it's enthralling. It's all of it. And that's the beauty of the human journey. And we've been renouncing that for so long in our attempts to find nirvana, find heaven. And, and this can be heaven. This can be your own experience of both and. Again, we are not this human. We are not just a spiritual being. We we are both, and we are all of it, and mm -hmm. we get to honor all of it. Why do we... Read that. You're killing it, first time listener. What up, Ryan Joseph Dorman? Blah. Dropping knowledge and proving self on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. You're expanding our human race connectivity on a massive scale. Three, 436 people vibing to the deep truth. Not many can analyze hmm. and express these kinds of thought processes that lead to expanded consciousness of the mind, which results in actual goal of living from the heart. Steph. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Steph, what up, Steph? I learned everything you're talking about 
through traveling by myself and spending so much time on healing, learning, mm -hmm. experiencing many things. For the first time in my life, I put myself first. Being self-aware and knowing how to love myself has changed everything. Yes, You're both yes. amazing. Thank you for the love. Thank you, Steph. We love okay, you. Okay, we're finding a couple of your comments so we can... All right, uh, Shay, Shaylini, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm having a hard time understanding the purpose of goals, expectations, and desires in life in a way that's not limiting. How can I desire something without having a limiting goal or expectation? Great question. This is something that I love to talk about. Um, I love setting goals in my past, but I was setting goals from the place of expectation and attachment. What I've recognized is the goal that I set from my current paradigm of understanding is extremely limited because imagine this, take the ride with me. I'm making $20,000 a year. I'm feeling the scarcity. I'm feeling the not enoughness. I'm feeling like something's gotta give. I've got a family of five kids to take care of by myself, single mm -hmm. mom. Obviously none of this is real, but giving you a scenario. And all of a sudden I say, this year is gonna be different. 2017 is gonna be the year I'm gonna change mm -hmm. everything. Now what do I do? I create a vision for 2017. I play with some goals for 2017. Okay, this year I'm gonna make what feels realistic to somebody making $20,000, $50,000 this mm -hmm. year. Okay, this year I'm gonna make $50,000 and I'm gonna meet somebody, mm, doesn't feel realistic to me because I had a really bad breakup. So maybe I'll date a little bit this year. So now I'll give you an example of somebody who's making goals based on a current paradigm of reality yep. that seems possible and realistic to them. Now here's the thing, most of us are capable of way more than we could have ever imagined or even put our sights on. So goals are great if they are set with an open-ended intention without attachment. Mm. So an intention for you know this single mom making 20 grand a year could say, I intend to create more money than I've ever dreamed of to not only take care of my family, but to live an abundant lifestyle. Mm. Now there's no exact cap on that. There's no $50,000, $100,000, a million dollars, but she wants to live an abundant lifestyle, which could show up in a multitude of different ways. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be in the form of money. She yep. could have a family member pass away and be, inherit a house on the beach like that. You just never know how it's gonna show up. Yep. And so many people are so fixated on one particular goal and what it looks like, and they're missing how it's showing up a thousand different ways. Yep. And the universe, God, whoever you wanna call it, is so tapped into our magnificence and our potential. I just had this conversation this morning with my friend. It's the lowest hanging fruit. It literally, like, we're all creative, energetic beings, literally. We are here to tap in and use this force to create. That's what we're here for. And it's the lowest hanging fruit, but yet so many of us don't do the work to get to the space of energetic alignment and creation because it's really confronting. Mm. It's really confronting. And a lot of people don't want to be confronted with their bullshit to get to the space of elevated creation. Yeah. So that's my 25 cents. All that, and I'll add, um, just like in the Bible, ask and it is given, seek and you shall find. Mm. Um, your job is just to ask. And to play because so what's helpful for me is understanding that I can't take any of this with me and yes I would like to leave a legacy for my children and my family and all of that stuff but none of them can take it with them either nope. and borrow time really understanding that most humans missed most of life trying to get the goal trying to get the thing has me playing and you guys know this you probably had this experience dating Right? There could be 10 guys, and I'm speaking as if you're a woman, because you are. I am. 10 guys standing there, right? And all of them are pretty attractive. But the guy you probably are going to be most uh, attracted to is the guy that's not necessarily as concerned with like how he looks and like, you know, trying to, trying to make sure you see him. Have you ever noticed that, 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 that success is attractive? That, that it's effortless. When somebody is tapped in, like I would give the example of that person that's dancing in the middle of the club that sucks at <laughs> that dancing. Doesn't give a shit how they look. But they're just but they're so free. in it that they're you're free. like, yes, I want to go dance with them. And that person is the person that starts the dance, starts the dance party. Yeah. Well, the universe uh, acts in the same way. God acts in the same way. 
when we tap into what is our truth with a capital T, not a lowercase t, the truth of our being, which is love, which is joy, which is harmony, which is peace, which is vibrating very high. When we're tapped into that, that thing that Jesus, the Buddha, um, many people have done, and we've all done at different points in our lives, especially as children, we're so tapped in, right? When we get back to that thing, the thing that makes you upset about me moving my hands, when we get back to that thing, this is an ongoing joke now. Um, we become, uh, what's the word, beacons for, for stuff that is way beyond what you could even imagine with the limited paradigm that you're even operating from. So what Alexi is talking about and what we also operate from is, yes, we have specific goals and things that we're headed towards, but the truth is we know that we serve a God that's bigger than even what we can even think about. Mm -hmm. And that our job is just to get in, is to ask and then get into vibrational alignment, as Abraham Hicks would say, and, and, and watch it rain. Yes, action, action, action. But can you yes. do the action from, from that, from that joy-filled place? Yeah. Or, or are you gonna do it from grinding? I'm always grinding, trying to make it, barely surviving. Cause guys, grinding and hustle, <laughs> well, like I get it, I get it. And it's, it's all a matter of how you take it. Grinding and hustle actually comes from scarcity. Yes. Like there's not enough time. There's not enough abundance. I'm far behind. I need to get on this right now. That's all scarcity mentality, stepping in, creeping in, and yes. actually, again, from full circle conversation, lowering your vibrational currency yes. on the planet. And you're wondering why you're hustling and grinding and nothing is changing because you're hustling and grinding from scarcity. So what Preston's saying is, can you hustle from a space of love? Can you hustle from a space of contribution? Can you hustle from a space of like, yo, I got one life, let's see what I can create on this planet. Let's see what I'm made of for me, not to prove to anyone else, mm -hmm. not to, to make more money and be better than X, Y, and Z, but to see what I'm made of. And somebody had a comment on there, like what if you have a family and kids and all that stuff? Yeah, if you have a family and kids, even more reason to see what you're made of. Yep. And from a place of love and empowerment and like truly tapped in alignment to go, all right, if I am made of the same stuff as the stars, what then am I capable of? Yeah. Instead of playing this small, egoic, I'm not enough game, which we, we all tap into at times, instead of playing that game, play the game of I'm unstoppable, yes. I'm unbreakable, mm. I'm limitless, mm. I am everything, I am life. Yes. Play that game and see how you end up creating because that game is a higher vibrational currency. Let me add something about that family conversation because yeah. that's the one that everybody uses as the crutch. Well, I have a family. Yeah. I got a nine to five and I got to hold on, right? And we, we, we are operating in a very particular uh, sort of frequency. And I want to remind you that if you're on the internet right now, nine out of 10, you're a part of the 1% of the world that lives above $2. Yeah. So like nine out of 10, your kids will never, ever, ever starve to death and sometimes you got to take a couple steps what you would call backwards to launch yourself forward yeah. when Alexi and I got together most people don't know this I moved back in with my mom I had more money in my account than I ever had in my life but I was I was I was in process I understood something I understood that sometimes you got to take a, a, t a couple steps back here to to reconfigure Right? Sometimes you gotta sacrifice. Sometimes you have to give up to go up. And so I gave up my apartment. I gave up all the things that I was holding on to to go live with my mother for a little bit, to regroup, to take a look, to take another look, and to get that this was what was, what was calling me forward. Okay, P, you're here to serve the people. Mm. Right now you're acting and modeling. Okay, it's time. Let that shit go. Go move back with your mom. Get, re reconfigure what's happening. I was, I had met the love of my life and I moved in with my mom. Do you understand? As a 30 something year old man, like what that takes, what kind of pride I have to sidestep to be in that conversation. Yeah. And I wasn't bawling or anything. And that's why I thank you, baby, for loving me. Cause I know there's a lot of guys who, you know, come in with their millions and they're like, oh, you want this? And, Ooh, and like, why do they have a French accent? I don't know, oh, they just have this? to have one. You but want this? The point <laughs> is, Yes you, you have, want this? yes, you have a family. No, I don't yes, want you that. have stuff that's going on. Wait, and there's a great quote I read today that do it. Okay, this is perfect. Don't burn the bridge until you built the ship. Oh. Uh. Don't burn the bridge until you built the ship. I don't know where <gasps> I saw that. I wish I could credit whoever I, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw that. Um, a lot of people are like, 
fuck it, I'm going in, I'm burning the bridge, like, let's go. Build your shit first. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Take care of you first. and Slow your you ass know, down. <laughs> slow your ass down. Again, there's no rush when you're creating from a space of infinite possibility, full abundance. Everything is possible. Everything is here. So really, and, and there's a fine line here because you don't want to take too much time in planning and because a lot of people use planning as a way to procrastinate. And if you really can align with the truth of the matter is that, okay, let me build my shit. Let me take care of my house first. Or let me reduce my expenses so I can get clear and not have money be my focus right now. Whatever you have to do in order to make the decisions that will move you towards your bliss, that's where it's at. Yes, yes. Yeah. Rock Thomas is on here as well. Yeah, what yeah. up? We're about to check in on his mastermind coming up soon. Yeah, if you guys aren't following Rock, he's he's the money guy. He's finances. Amazing. I had him speak at Stress 22. He's probably going to hop on. Wait, so. Tammy said, We have two children and have made it a family habit to use words of abundance, love, and acceptance. Beautiful. That brings us what we need. My husband right, meditates Joey. daily for our family, and whenever we need something, somehow it comes to fruition. Occasionally we get caught up in thoughts of lack, and our life reflects it. It doesn't take long to refocus. Yep. I love that. See, because here's the thing everyone has their excuse, everyone has their one excuse. Like we have a thousand excuses, but everyone has their one that they're like, oh, well, that's not going to work for me because fill in the blank. Yeah. I have I, 68 kids. And it's not going to work for me because I have student loan debt. That's not going to work for oh. me because I'm not educated enough. That's not going to work for me because I don't have the access to resources. That's not going to work for me because I'm not tall enough, pretty enough, smart enough, big enough, rich enough, fill in the blank. We've all got our excuse. Well, it's not going to work for me because I have kids. That's easy for you guys to say because you live in this place. Yeah. No freaking excuses. Like, I'm so sick of people leading with their excuses because your excuse is your fear. And they'll just be there for the rest of your life. Like, so, that's the thing. Like, they're not going anywhere. You'll always have always, a new excuse. Always. Like, we have new excuses from this level of paradigm that we're playing at. Yep. But do we choose to live by our cowardice, our excuse? Because an excuse is a cowardice way to show up to life and go, you're really saying, I don't feel ready. Mm -hmm. I don't feel ready. So here's my excuse. Validate me, validate me, yeah. validate me that I haven't done the thing that I said I wanted to do, that I said was going to change my life, that I said I'm passionate about. Validate me, world, because mm -hmm. I have an excuse. Yep. And the world will validate you, yep. especially people who are playing the same game of commiserating and validation with you. So elevation requires separation. Boom. Who are you spending your time around? Like a lot of people don't like being told the truth about themselves. They just don't like it. And you know, Preston and I have coached people who hire us as coaches and don't like hearing the confronting truth. It's like, this is why you hired us. We're not gonna sit here and let your excuses win. We're not gonna sit here and let you be a coward in your life again and again, because we've played that game for a long time. And guess what? You want the life that you say you want, you've gotta be willing to override the coward excuses. Boom. And like, I'm not saying coward in like a good or bad way. It's just, it's the truth. You, it, you're letting fear win and, and that's not courageous. Like live a courageous life, live a bold life, see what you're freaking made of. It's game time, you have one life, like this is not a dress yeah. rehearsal, we've all heard that a thousand times, so see what you're actually made of, see what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, again, aren't willing to separate themselves from their smallness. Mm -hmm. They're not willing to separate themselves from their fear-based stories. They're not willing to separate themselves from their friend group that keeps them small and holds them down because God forbid if they succeed, that means that, mm, now they don't fit in with us anymore. A lot of people are so afraid to lose the life that they're so attached to, yet so disappointed in. Mm -hmm. And they're not willing to see that they're the only thing standing in their way. Yep. Only thing. Boom! All right. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Um, I just want to like scroll. These comments are a little like slow on my computer because yeah. of the Wi- We're in Bali, people. So We're in Bali! The Wi-Fi is not the best. Press is jumping on the best. I was like... You better not be jumping on my phone. Um, hello. Do that. I dare you guys to jump, jump on, on your bed. Especially anybody. Somebody just said I'm 53 something something. I'm, something. I'm 53 you... years old. I've had so many excuses for so many things. Excellent. That's awesome. I love you guys. All right. Jump on your bed now. Boom. Bye. Boom. We're going to jump on hey, your Have fun. I didn't want your dress to come up. Um, okay. Okay. Say Always bye. Always thinking about me. Say bye. Bye. Uh, okay. How do you turn this thing off? I don't know.
Okay. I think maybe we press this. Nope. Yep, that is it.